The title of this podcast is, How You Doing In There? And this is a podcast, again, inspired by someone who I listen to quite often, Michael Singer. I love the podcast. It's just, he just gets right to it. You know, there's he's treating us like adults, so he gets right to it. There's no walking and babysitting us through uh, things or concepts or saying it's okay to be the way you are, which it is. Uh, but he's saying, but if you want something different, you got to you gotta set your game up. And that's one of the things that I have really been trying to do. So in relationship to this quote, I think about it all the time, about whenever I'm involved in a situation, uh, I'm thinking about how am I doing inside? And I have done this quite often on the pickleball court when I recognize that I'm not having fun. When I'm not having fun, it's because I've allowed some, somehow I've forgotten that I am attached to a certain expectation or things going a certain way. And that is a recipe for suffering. And then I catch myself, I let go of that, and then I start to be okay again. I start to totally understand that what's happening on the outside, I have very little, if any, control over. So all the work is on the inside. I want to have a good time inside, then have a good time inside. It is simple as having that choice, even through some of the most challenging things. And there's examples of people that do this really well, like all the time. They're so good about taking situations that would normally be crippling for for for, for most people, and they're able to find the good in it. Well, you know, I, I just think I remember uh, years ago, whenever it would rain uh, on the pickleball court when I first started playing, I'd be so upset that it was raining. And now when it rains and it's big about, oh, man, it's raining out there, you know, hopefully the farmers are happy about this and hoping hopefully the water aquifers are going to be, you know, filled. Uh, hopefully Lake Powell will come back up to its traditional levels when the water is flowing. Like I'm thinking about it in a completely different way. What turns one person off turns another person on. So I'm looking at all those things completely different. And that helps me answer this question about how you doing in there, recognizing that I have a choice about how I'm doing in there. When I first started doing this, the, the well-being practice and that that check-in, it started with, okay, when one of my expectations wasn't met, okay, I'm not bothered, I can handle that. But what about expectation number two? A classic example, you're at the checkout line, you're doing fine. You know, there's two registers open up, you get in the register, you get in the line at the register, you pat yourself on the back for being patient. You let somebody else with fewer items go in front of you. And then you notice that the, the the cashier who's moving everybody through the line pretty good is replaced by a new cashier who seems like it's the first time that they, they, they've ever seen a cash register. And uh, and then the person that's in front of them wants to write a, you know, write a check, but they don't have a pen or they forgot their ID and they got to run to the car. How you doing in there? How you doing in there? You know, everything is great. You find out that you are, your your flights are going great. You find out there's a kid, you know, the flight is going to be delayed. You're like, oh, I can handle a little delay. Then the delay is instead of it being an hour, it now it's three hours. How you doing in there? Oh, you got that master too? Not a problem. Flight's canceled. How you doing in there? Then it becomes a problem. The practice kicks in when you get to that point to where, you can handle everything and then you get to the moment to where you can't handle it. That's when you need your practice. That's when the awareness comes up. At Mayo Clinic, we're having quite a few changes that are happening uh, there right now. And it's been a struggle for a lot of people and I've been observing it and I it's been hitting my stuff too. It hasn't affected me directly, um, I, but hey, when has that ever stopped anybody, right? When something is directly or indirectly hitting them, they find a way to make it about them anyway. But in this particular case, uh, it's having an effect on, on colleagues and how, they, how they're feeling about, you know, it's just, just some level of comfort and security is shaking that. 
And it's also come with a ton of changes uh, for people that have been very experienced in roles that they're being either, uh, they're looking for replacements for the roles or they're looking or they're being replaced by people that don't have uh, the experience uh, that right off the bat is necessary. There's going to be some growing pain, some, some, some learning that needs to take place. And so the first change that happens, you might be a person or a leader who's okay with the change. What about when they change the next person out? How are you doing in there? You know, they said, okay, you know, there's five key roles. They've changed two of them. I can handle that. What about when they make changes three and four to those key roles? How are you doing in there? The thing that I really try to remember all the time is not about the external things that, that influence how I feel inside. What's going to have the greatest effect on how I feel inside and how I'm doing in there is going to be me. And in every situation, there is a way to raise the moment. So in this particular example, a way to raise the moment is if you're a leader, is this. There's a ton of changes going on. And for you, you got you got a lot happening. You got a lot of things that you are trying to, to, uh, to really optimize, to provide the, the most exceptional care and experience for everybody. You got some big goals, some good plans, some big plans for your staff and for the department. And then these changes all of a sudden come up and happen. There is something that you can do about that is one, when the changes happen, you can ask yourself, how am I doing in here? Am I being bothered? Can I handle these changes? And if you can't, then you know that's when you apply the practice. If you can, then great. You become a blessing and a contribution to everyone around you in the mission. But in those, chance, in those cases that you can't, there's something that you can fall back on and that, I, that I encourage you to do. That's to ask yourself, ask yourself, Am I being a good colleague and a good leader? What would 2.0 do in this situation? The same thing goes in your marriage and relationships and your friendships and your parenting. What would 2.0 do in this situation? And with the case at, at, at Mayo Clinic where there's some changes that are happening right now, that in the beginning it seems like they're easy to, to roll with and even you can help others get through them. But then that one or two changes happens, I want you to stop it. That, that kind of pushes you to the edge to where you're not doing so good inside. I want you to stop and ask yourself at the end of every interaction, was I a good leader in that interaction? And I'm not just talking about, did you get your message across? You know, did I tell them what they need to do, be done, express my frustration? That's not a 2.0 leader. No. I want you to say the way that I interacted with that colleague was it helpful or hurtful to their well-being, to my well-being, to our relationship and where we want to go. And you will have a better experience because regardless of whether or not you can affect change, either in that moment or any moment, is secondary. What is most important is who you're being in this moment. The key is on the being part of it. You know, I always give, go back to pickleball. But when I was having the most unsatisfying experience in pickleball, it had nothing to do with my partner. It had nothing to do, I mean, it, it had a lot to do with whether or not my partner played well or not, whether I made every shot that I think I should have made whether we won the game or not. You know how many of those things are completely outside of my control? I mean, I'm not going to hit every ball per perfectly. There's somebody on the other side of the court that's making sure that I don't do that. <laughs> so so I, I I have some control, but no, not a whole lot. And I definitely have no control of my partner and what that experience is. And then, and to a very limited extent, do I have any control over the outcome of the game or what the final score is going to be? But what I do have control over is at the end of play, is to look at my partner and ask, was I a good teammate today? And if you are a parent, a significant other, uh, or with loved ones in your life, or a leader, a colleague, ask yourself, was I a good colleague today? Was I was 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 I two point today? With all these new staff coming on at Mayo Clinic in these new roles, it is so easy, and I've done this myself to really only look at it from your perspective. 
But just as this change has been something that has challenged your practice, it's doing the same thing for them. Their load is no lighter than yours. It's comparable. And in some ways, it may even be heavier. But if you're not working on yourself, that's not something you even consider about the weight that they're carrying. So instead, if you're being a good colleague and good teammate, you ask them, how are you doing? Is there something I can do to help? Is there some communication that I can be engaged in? Uh, some differences. How can I say it that's better? You know, uh, and feel free to coach me up. We're, we're dealing with some change right now. And I want us to get through it together in a wellness-centered way to where as we make these decisions, as we communicate and talk to each other, we're asking each other, is the way we're going about this, the way that I'm going about this, supporting their well-being. And if you support theirs, you increase the likelihood of supporting your own. So just come back to this. When you know those moments, ask yourself, how are you doing in there? That's you talking to yourself. How are you doing there? And if you're bothered and you're not a 2.0, then asking yourself that question creates a space to where other choices are going to reveal themselves to you if you're open about how to raise that moment. Not how to solve the problem. That may or may not be something that you can affect. But what you can affect is how you show up for yourself and for others. Work on that.